A lot of people are rightfully not happy about it, but right now we're witnessing the slow but eventual erosion of ad blocking. On YouTube, there's been the recent trend of the ad block block, where you have pop ups either informing you, hey, ad block is against the TOS, stop being a bad boy. Or you have the ones that say, hey, after three more videos being played, your video player just outright won't work anymore. Right now, whilst YouTube is getting a lot of heat for it, they are not the ones who started the trend. They are just the biggest ones to partake in it. This has been a thing on news sites for a long time now. It's just when you're a news site, you just don't have the kind of resources that a platform like YouTube does to, you know, get around the ad blockers defeating your ad block block. I think I used the right number of blocks there. And more recently, there's been a revitalized discussion about Manifest V3, which, whilst was on hold, was never put to rest. They were just biding their time, trying to, like, get all their internal stuff working first, and then be like, hey guys, remember me? Let's go. Now, anytime that I or anybody else talk about Manifest V3 and content blockers or ad blockers, whichever term you want to be using, Somebody brings up, hey, what about uBlock Origin Lite? And as we've discussed on multiple occasions now, there is a reason it's called uBlock Origin Lite. It's light because it has less features. Whilst it is not completely useless, it's very much a light version and does not have the functionality that the uBlock Origin you know and love actually has. And no matter how many times the devs say it and say that this is never going to be as good as the MV2 version, there are still people out there saying, oh, it's good enough for me. And that's good for you. But please don't market it to other people as if that is the case. I do expect it to get better and better, and maybe it'll be good on certain websites that don't really have that much ad block detection. And maybe some will come up with a whole new solution that is specially designed around MV3 that gets you like 90, 95% of the way there. That doesn't exist right now, but it's theoretically possible. Maybe. But there is one part of the equation that is often skimmed over or just not really mentioned that I didn't realize how important it was until a recent piece by Endgadget. So this piece is called Inside the Arms Race Between YouTube and Ad Blockers. I am not going to sit here and read it all, but I will leave it linked down below. As you can probably infer by recent actions from YouTube, Google and YouTube are fully aware of ad blockers and fully aware of what people are running and are 100% running them internally and testing their ad block detection against these tools as they are progressively updating and making sure that whatever they have deployed on the website is detecting the tools that exist. Right now, obviously the ad blocking tools are doing a fairly good job. They are noticing these changes, updating their logic, updating their filter list, and making sure that they still continue working on YouTube. But this isn't just like, oh, you know, a one-off thing or a once-a-month thing where some engineer at YouTube's like, ah, oh, seems like uBlock Origin's working now. Time to push out an update. This is like a near daily thing where changes, minor, minor changes are being made. Implementing new detection and ad delivery systems, making minor tweaks to strings so they're no longer found by the blocker, making minor changes to the location of elements, and other little things that just break the detection being used by the extension, and overall, just being a general annoyance to the ad block developers. Now, you may know that plugins like uBlock Origin make use of what are known as filter lists. These do exactly what the name would suggest. They're a list of things that should be filtered. Now, in this context, we mainly care about ads, but uBlock Origin describes itself as a content blocker, and there are things outside of ads you might want to block. For example, the stupid emote thing you see in YouTube live chats. 
that's a good example. But there are various other things, like maybe a pop-up on a news website informing you to go and subscribe and things like that. And as sites like YouTube are being updated on a very frequent basis, and not even consistently, YouTube will A-B test the most random of random things, which I would assume is probably part of trying to break the ad blockers, the filter list also needs to be updated on a very frequent basis as well. Now these updates do not come through the Chrome Web Store. Instead, they're being dynamically loaded directly into the extension itself. This skips the entire review process and they can be updated, you know, once every five minutes if the developer feels the need to do so. This is done through a system which Google calls remotely hosted code. So would you be surprised if this section exists on the Migrate to Manifest v3 page? Scroll down to Improve Extension Security. Manifest v3 improves extension security in several ways. Besides an enhanced content security policy, support is removed for remotely hosted code and execution of arbitrary strings. This is what the page looks like right now, and I don't know why, but it seems like they might have um, moved a bit of stuff around, specifically the remotely hosted code section. Now, does that have anything to do with the response to the Engadget article? I don't know. Very possibly. A key improvement in Manifest v3 is that extensions can't load remote code like JavaScript or WASM files. This lets us reliably and efficiently review the safe behavior of extensions when they're submitted to the Chrome Web Store. Specifically, all logic must be included in the extensions package. When I say that Google doesn't really like to take drastic actions and generally likes to slowly poison the well, Stuff like this is what I am talking about, because on the face of it, that sounds good. You know, you don't have extensions that can just randomly load in other code, and while it seems like it's totally fine when it's uploaded, it really exists to load a malicious payload. Like, that's a good thing to stop. However, it also means in practice that if a content blocker wishes to push an update to their filter list, or some minor logic change to how ad blocking is handled, no longer can they just go ahead and do so without any intervention from the Chrome Web Store. Instead, what they need to do is go to the Chrome Web Store and say, hey, we have a new version of the extension, and I have no doubt the update is going to be allowed through and pushed to the users in due time. Here is a blog post about releasing an extension on the Chrome Web Store. If you're updating the code of a Manifest V2 extension, it could take 15 minutes to 3 hours. If you're updating your manifest file, some images, a description, 2-3 to three hours to maybe 7 days. On Manifest V3, just updating some code, it could take less than a minute. If you're updating the rest of the stuff, it could be 2-3 to three hours up to 7 days. However, after submitting an extension to the Chrome Web Store, extension authors can get hit with a manual review. This can lead to your update being delayed by up to three weeks. In some cases, authors have reported not getting the update approved even after three weeks. This can be especially problematic if your last update had a serious bug and now you got hit with a manual review, which means your extension is unusable for almost a month. By contrast, normal automatic review times are usually a few hours at most. Now, I wouldn't expect that every update is a manual review. However, I would not be surprised if a couple of them happen to be. And let's just say it's a week. A week is enough time to completely break one of these extensions and make it absolutely nothing on YouTube. So now you have both neutered ad blocking extensions because it is running on MV3, but you also massively, massively slow down the development time and make it to the point where users basically just think the extension is consistently broken. As it currently stands, some developers are already struggling to keep up and adding this into the mix basically just completely ruins it. Now, 
you're always going to be able to go to the extension and then install it as like a developer extension. But by having the version in the Chrome Web Store completely broken, that basically tells the majority of the user base, hey, you shouldn't be using this anymore. And who do you think is going to get the blame for that? Because it's not going to be YouTube. Everybody knows that YouTube is doing this ad block detection stuff and doesn't like ad blockers. But they're not going to be blamed for an extension being broken. The extension developers, those are the ones who are going to get the blame. And with the absolute slowest of the slow updates, there's going to be nothing they can do about it. Whilst you and I might have an idea about what's going on and what we can do, to the normies out there who just install an ad blocker and expect the ad blocker to work, they're going to see it be broken. They're going to install the next one and the next one and the next one. They're going to run through all of the ad blockers they can find. And they'll hit the end and find nothing that is consistently working and nothing that works for more than just a couple of days. And when that happens, that's going to be one less person who feels like ad blocking is even worth it anymore. And there's going to be a lot of those people who just uninstall an ad blocker and never come back to it. I don't expect ad blockers to go away. There's going to be a lot of websites out there where they basically just always work. You know, you go to a sketchy download website, they're using some weird sketchy ad delivery system, not at all related to Google. It just happens to work there because they don't really put any protections in place to make it not work. But I wouldn't be surprised if over the coming years, they just stop working on major websites like YouTube. And if you want to have an ad blocked experience, you either pay for whatever their premium system is, or it's going to move to a more external system like a third party client, which already do exist and already do have user bases, but they are still fairly small. The idea of ad blocking extensions in the browser is basically going to go away with the exception of other browsers outside of the Chromium ecosystem that exist, whether that be Brave, which is basically a fork of Chromium at this point, whether it be Firefox and other things like that. But that's for the people who understand that there are alternatives. The majority of people are Chrome users who are going to do nothing but use Chrome. Whilst people are celebrating the very minor victories here and there, the arms race has only just begun. Things are going to get more and more complex, and I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing a whole new way of delivering ads that is nothing like we've currently seen, that basically needs to have the entire system completely reinvented. But that is just my thought, so let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. On YouTube, do you have premium? Do you run adblock? And do you think that things aren't actually going to get that bad and it'll be fine going into the future? I would love to know how you still have that idea. So let me know your thoughts down below. And if you like the video, go like the video. Really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here. Check out the Patreon, subscribe, the Libero Pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and don't block this ad.